as governor, as attorney general, as dad of two amazing children. My goal has always been to protect our kids, our friends, and our neighbors, and all of our fellow Kentuckians. Here in the Commonwealth, we must do better to achieve that goal. In 2019, Kentucky ranked ninth for new criminal human trafficking cases. Labor and sex trafficking is one of the worst evils imaginable. It subjects victims to unspeakable harms. It violates them over and over. It takes their dignity and heats a level of trauma on those individuals that most of us can't even fathom. It happens in big cities and small towns. It happens in large criminal enterprises and sadly, it even happens when family members will allow harm to their children or their relatives over and over. It often impacts those that are already at risk. It is the job of every Kentuckian, American, every responsible adult to be able to do everything in their power to stop human trafficking, to recognize it, and to do what it takes. I believe we are our brother and sister's keeper, and it is our duty to protect the most vulnerable. We are called on to serve the lost, the lonely, and the left behind, and that is exactly who is subjected to human trafficking. Uh, second chapter of Philippians says, and look out for one another's interests, not just for your own. That's why seeking justice for victims of human trafficking is part of my core mission as a public servant, as a parent, and as a person of faith. I will continue this fight until we end human trafficking and help every survivor to get on that path towards healing and wholeness. I remember the first save of the victim that I was a part of. It was the Thursday before Derby in that first full year I was serving as Attorney General. There, a brave Kentuckian, a hotel clerk, noticed something was off, made a phone call, and because of that, a 16-year-old girl was pulled out of the most traumatic experiences possible and given a new opportunity at life. That survivor, like all survivors, had a tough road ahead of her. But it's a road that we have so many amazing organizations that we're going to hear about today, amazing people, that can help you, if you are a survivor or a current victim, to walk down that road towards healing. So many in Kentucky have worked so hard to help us do better. It goes all the way back to 2007 when we made progress as a state by passing some of the strongest human trafficking laws in the country to protect trafficked children and to go after labor and sex traffickers. During my term as AG, we established the Office of Child Abuse and Human Trafficking Prevention and Prosecution because it was that important every day to have units that showed up to protect our children, to find these traffickers, to bring them to justice, but also to focus on those victims that needed healing. We formed a statewide human trafficking task force that had the first full-time human trafficking investigator that this state had ever seen. We fought the opioid epidemic and continue to, a public health crisis rooted in addiction that's torn many families apart and is often part of the coercion used to subject uh, these individuals to the horrific trauma and acts that they are subjected to. We arrested a record number of child predators. We trained thousands of people on how to recognize human trafficking and what their duty is when they saw it. Remember, human trafficking, when it involves minors, is a form of child abuse. You have a legal duty and responsibility. It's not a question. It's a responsibility to make a call when you see something concerning. And it shouldn't just have to be that legal responsibility for adults. Those are children of God, too that need our help. We've worked with U L's Human Trafficking Research Initiative that is doing amazing work to study and respond to the research findings. 
In 2020, we were one of only four states to receive a $1 million grant related to human trafficking from the U.S. Department of Justice's Office for Victims of Crime. The funding helps our Cabinet for Health and Family Services to develop and implement multi-agency advisory council on human trafficking and child labor prevention. It helps us work towards launching a human trafficking and child labor screening tool to identify high-risk children. Because thanks to that U of L School of Social Work, we know, we know who are subjected to human trafficking and who are most at risk. And it helps us with a full-time child protection specialist that we were able to hire. We secured more than eight million dollars in federal funding for support services for victims of sexual assault or human trafficking. Unfortunately, these fights can't be won in a day or with one grant or one initiative. We got to work hard and hustle every day. I remember in, in my term as AG when we uh, were able to secure uh, the longest human trafficking sentence under state law in the history of our state. It was against a former district judge in northern Kentucky that had harmed so many individuals out there. That was a long fight. It was a tough fight. But it was a fight for justice that was secured. I stand before you today encouraged by some incredible intra-agency work that was not only between groups uh, in our state government that you're going to hear from in a minute, KSP, the Attorney General's Office, uh, Catholic Charities and others that are helping out um, after the rescues, but between multiple states as well. Just like we talk about the evils of COVID and, and the opioid epidemic, not caring about county lines or state lines, uh, these traffickers, these criminals, don't either. And so we have to be innovative, flexible, and by God, we got to work together when it comes to saving our people and saving our children. On August 26, Kentucky participated in Operation United Front, a 12-state human trafficking operation led by the Missouri Attorney General's Office and the Missouri Highway Patrol. Kentucky's operation was organized and led by the Kentucky State Police and included 29 additional agencies across Kentucky including the Office of Attorney General, and we'll hear from General Cameron here in a minute. Thank you, all of you, for your hard work. We believe this is the first multi-state operation of its kind. I can tell you we worked on a couple, but none, that included this many different states. This is a good sign as we move this fight in the future, and today we're sharing the results with you. Kentucky conducted four trafficking operations simultaneously in Bowling Green, in Northern Kentucky, in Elizabethtown, and in McCracken County. The operation rescued 21 victims, two of which are minors. And I'm going to mention the arrests in a minute, but this is the most important piece. Yes, we want to make sure that we get these criminals, uh, and, and they're truly perpetrating evil, off the streets, but these individuals that have been harmed over and over. Most important thing is their rescue. 21 victims, two of which are minors. And 46 arrests of human traffickers across the Commonwealth. Of the 12 that participated, Kentucky saved, of the 12 states that participated, Kentucky saved the highest number of victims and made the most arrests. This means our children, our families, and all Kentuckians are a little bit safer, and that we have fought for and will continue to fight for a little bit of extra justice. Operation United Front also used a victim-centered approach to help victims receive the support and services necessary, medical services, housing, food, and others. I'd like to thank Barron County Area Child Advocacy Center, Catholic Charities, Department for Community-Based Services, Kentucky State Police Victims Advocates, Northern Kentucky Children Advocacy Center, the Refugee for Women, Southeast Christian Church, the Salvation Army, and the Salvation Army of Cincinnati for their tireless work to serve and help crime victims and their survivors. Folks, 15 years ago, you would not have seen an operation like this, so victim-centered, ready to provide the services the moment that that victim is identified, and can be helped. We will not back down until we ensure that all victims are given a voice and the offenders are held accountable. That's one reason uh, that we formed uh, a Survivors Council that continues to today. 
to lift up the voices of those that have been trafficked or otherwise harmed by violent crime. And I can tell you that those are incredible folks, brave, willing to share the most difficult times of their lives, and many of them have become close friends of mine. They are incredible leaders, and we would not be here today without them. To win the war against these heinous crimes, we must bring everyone together, from state leaders to survivors to advocates and law enforcement. It's critical that we work together. By taking these next steps, we will stop human trafficking and support survivors. Together, we can end this in our lifetime. I truly believe it, and we can make our communities safer. Now it's time to hear from those who supported Operation United Front. First, we'll be hearing from KSP Commissioner Colonel Philip Burnett. Good morning. Thank you, Governor, for your dedication to fighting human trafficking crimes in Kentucky. As Attorney General and now as Governor, you have displayed a steadfast commitment to the victims of this heinous crime. I'd like to thank everyone for being in attendance today. Human trafficking is an issue facing communities across the country, and the Kentucky State Police is committed to investigating and bringing justice to those involved. Human trafficking is also a crime that is often multi-jurisdictional in nature so when we were contacted by authorities in Missouri to participate in this operation, we were all in to be a part of this very important operation. When law enforcement agencies are willing to cross state lines to work together, they immediately become a force multiplier against human trafficking, which is exactly what occurred in this initiative. Operation United Front was a 12-state multi-jurisdictional operation developed by Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt in conjunction with the Missouri State Highway Patrol. KSP also partnered with nearly 50 other agencies within Kentucky. This multi-state simultaneous sting operation accounted for 102 arrests the rescue of 41 victims, which included two minors. Officers also provided medical services to 21 of the victims. These operations typically use undercover tactics. Officers who arrange dates or meetings with potential human trafficking victims and rescue that victim or sex worker and provide needed services or pose as a victim themselves and arrest buyers or traffickers. The Kentucky State Police wants to stress this operation was a success, a success because of the work and dedication of law enforcement professionals working together in a collaborative way. This included the Kentucky Attorney General's Office, local police departments, sheriff's offices across Kentucky, and of course our federal partners. Every agency should be proud of the role they played in this operation. In true Team Kentucky fashion, your efforts have given these victims the chance to start their lives over again. We are proud of the work performed so far, but we realize there is more to do and we will carry and expand upon our efforts in the future. Kentucky law enforcement has sent a message to those involved in human trafficking that we will not tolerate such and we will be vigilant in finding those who prey upon our most vulnerable, especially our children. These types of investigations are victim-based and often we rescue victims from these stings which they have nowhere to go. They may need medical care. They may be battling a chemical addiction. And most certainly, they are emotionally scarred. This is where another very important aspect 
of this initiative comes into play, the victim services community. Before we describe their, mo their role more in depth by one of our speakers here today, it's my pleasure to introduce our Attorney General, General Daniel Cameron. Uh, General Cameron and his uh, office and his investigators have been uh, great partners through this initiative. I'd like to welcome General Cameron. Thank you, uh, Colonel Burnett and uh, Governor Bashir. Uh, thank you. Good morning to all those that are in attendance, either watching at home or for uh, those here that are important, uh, covering this very important work. Operation United Front is what happens when we put agency acronyms aside for the betterment of our 120 counties. Because local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies from 12 states came together, they are parents who can sleep better tonight knowing that some predator is not trying to exploit their child. And teenagers can go online with a little more confidence they won't be harassed in a chat room. Simply put, because of these arrests made during this operation, there are fewer traffickers preying on our families and our communities. In 2019, Kentucky ranked ninth in the nation for newly filed federal trafficking cases, but Operation United Front is a significant step in the right direction and say that we are not going to tolerate this sort of egregious conduct in our commonwealth. And I believe that message has now come across loud and clear. I'm proud that our Department of Criminal Investigations and our Office of Victims Advocates stepped up to the plate to help with this monumental effort, working with the Kentucky State Police, Secret Ser Service, Sheriff's Offices, as well as police departments in Kraken, Marshall, and Warren counties, and in Lawrenceburg and Owensboro. There were so many success stories during this operation. For example, one of our detectives was involved in an undercover sting that led to the arrest of a police officer in Maryland Heights, Missouri for online enticement of a minor. This is a big deal and I cannot stress enough that when we break down silos, this is what happens. That bad actors are on notice their conduct is not welcomed here, that our streets are safer, and that our people can live more freely. Of course, there is always a story to tell about the bravery and heroism of our detectives, our sheriffs, and our police officers. This operation is just another example of the sacrifices they make to keep all of us safe and we should collectively say thank you. We're going to continue to do our part in the AG's office to fight human trafficking and exploitation. To all of you that are watching, we need your help. Earlier this year, we launched the Your Eyes Save Lives statewide human trafficking initiative to mobilize Kentuckians to recognize human trafficking in our communities. You can visit youreyessavelives.ky.gov to learn more and to do your part to learn the signs of human trafficking and how to report it. Again, thank you to all of our partners. I'm grateful for the silos that have been broken down and torn down. I'm grateful for putting aside the acronyms that we so often hide behind and for the success of Operation United Front and God bless our law enforcement community. Thank you all. To provide more details about the victim services that uh, Governor Bashir and I were talking about earlier in our, in our remarks, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce one of our speakers today that will expand upon that. I'm proud to introduce Kentucky State Police Detective Regina Luntz. She is a 21-year veteran of the Kentucky State Police. 
Detective Lunks has led the KSP Human, Human Trafficking Task Force since 2017. Her efforts in coordinating this operation for Kentucky are unmeasurable. Please welcome Detective Regina Lunks. Thank you, Commissioner Burnett. Um, when we began planning operation, this operation, our goal was to conduct a rescue detail to identify and recover juvenile and adult victims of, year, of human trafficking uh, by using a multidisciplinary approach. The Northern Kentucky detail identified and offered victim services to 17 possible victims and recovered two missing juveniles. The Elizabethtown detail assisted two victims and is working towards a human trafficking arrest. The Bowling Green detail assisted five victims and made an arrest for human trafficking and executed a search warrant on an illicit massage parlor. The McCracken County detail was an internet crimes against children operation. This is just a summary of the dedicated work put into this operation. I want to take a moment to provide more detail about the roles of victim services community played in this operation. We could not have done it without them. While I don't have enough time to mention all of them, here are a few examples of the great assistance they provided. The Department of Community-Based Services, Sydney Lawson and Chelsea Hurd, were on standby all night to assist with call out of social workers for any possible juvenile recovery. Thank you to Tara Cecil for streamlining their efforts. Child Victim Advocacy Center, Barron River in Northern Kentucky stood at the ready to assist, leaving their doors open and interviewers on call for possible emergency interviews. The FBI Victims Advocate, Dua Karishi, assisted a massage parlor victim and with the help of other advocates, found her housing. Refuge for Women in Southeast Christian, I cannot say enough about, uh, interviewed and assisted victims. They fed and listened to their stories and made them feel heard. They also fed troopers and police officers and FBI agents and all of our detectives and federal partners. Salvation Army in Northern Kentucky interviewed and assessed multiple victims and provided care and support. Catholic Charities provided assistance by caring for victims and assessing their needs. One of the detectives said they had a victim they encountered that just needed food and they were able to meet that need. Kentucky State Police Victims Advocates from Post 3, 4, 5, 6, and the AG's Victim Advocate worked tirelessly into the night and early morning partnering with non-government organizations to assist victims and law enforcement. There is so much more to these cases. Yes, it's important to make arrests and eliminate human trafficking, but for many, it is the empowerment we have to give them to leave terrible conditions for a chance at a new start. The unique aspect of Operation United Front is that it used a victim-centered and trauma-informed approach, which means all agencies involved work together to get the victims the help they need and the tools they need to become survivors. And that is exactly what we did. As a detective, I am humbled by the efforts of my law enforcement partners, our victims advocates, our intelligence analysts, and our civilian counterparts. Thank you all for your hard work. Al, thank you to all of our amazing uh, troopers, to General Cameron, to Greg Wolf, and all the investigators uh, in the AG's office. Uh, thank you to our federal um, law enforcement uh, folks that helped out, to all the troopers and others in every other state. I can't tell you how long folks have worked to get a operation like this, the size of it, the cooperation that is victim-centered, that has all the advocates involved from the start. So I think this is a, an incredibly uh, important operation in the victims that it saved, in those that it arrested, but in the example uh, that it sets moving forward. It's the exact right way to set these things up. 
So I want to remind everybody here today as we close that we have a legal duty to report suspicions of human trafficking. Um, the Attorney General uh, mentioned uh, youreyessavelives.ky.gov. Go there, learn the, the, what to look for. If you don't know, make sure, make sure uh, that you have done that. And then if you're suspicious of children involved in human trafficking, please contact the Department for Community-Based Services 1-877-KY-SAFE-1. That is your legal duty and requirement. If you have concerns about other possible human trafficking, please call the National Trafficking Hotline at 1-888-373-7888. But for the love of God, call somebody. Call somebody. If it's your local law enforcement, uh, if it's the, the AG's office, if it's the state police, in many ways, we don't care who you call as long as you call uh, somebody. Uh, it's an exciting day. Um, this is a report uh, that uh, everybody's excited to make. Uh, so with that, we'll take questions uh, first on uh, this, uh, and then I'm, I'm happy to answer uh, any others, um, but don't want to subject all the other speakers to uh, all off-topic uh, uh, questions. Tom. I know that the operation was conducted August 26, but how long had it been in the uh, planning stage before the execution took place? We have been uh, we've been working with uh, Missouri, some of those uh, for a couple of weeks. Talk about this initiative coming up, but it has not been a very long as far as the collaborative multi-state effort. That was one of the things that they had in an infancy that they that they wished to do, but the actual planning and the execution of it just been within the past couple, two, two to three weeks. So you're gonna put this together real quickly then? Yes, we did. Thank you. And, and I'll just add that the Attorney General's Office and the State Police are working to identify, prosecute human trafficking every day, every day. Anybody can else? You, can you just give us some more details of exactly how this worked? I mean, I don't know if it's collaboration, but what did it involve? What did well, let's, let's invite both the commissioner and the attorney general up to, to talk through that. I'm sorry, Lawrence, what was your question again? Talk about which, how this thing exactly worked. You said it was in multi-state, multi-agency, but, but what was it involved? Well, I'll allow uh, Colonel Burnett to speak more specifically, but from our perspective in the AG's office, um, you heard the governor mention Greg Wolf, who's their commissioner, the Department of Criminal Investigations, but an umbrella of uh, folks are underneath his uh, guidance in terms of our cyber crimes unit, and uh, we've got a human trafficking division as well uh, that's headed up by Heather Wager. So all of these folks, um, through the course of uh, the preparation for this in, in uh, operation, were working together behind the scenes uh, to uh, to get it ready so that uh, we could effectively make arrests uh, so that we can get these folks uh, off the streets and, and not harming our communities. But I'll allow the Colonel to speak. And, and yes, uh, you know, KSP has worked in conjunction with the Attorney General's office for years on, on such an issue. You know, as I said, we in 2017, Detective Blunt's, uh, she began the KSP Human Trafficking Task Force. So we've always worked in conjunction with these cases. So then when we were contacted by Missouri officials, uh, that they were looking to expand this well beyond Missouri into a multi-state uh, initiative. Uh, and then that's when uh, Detective uh, Luntz and well as uh, uh, you know, KSP that uh, we, we worked with uh, uh, Attorney General Cameron's office you know, on cases they had, cases we had, as well as working with the Sheriff's offices and the local police departments and, and our federal partners, you know, cases and initiatives that they were working on as well. I guess what I'm asking was, this a, was this an internet thing, or was it based on coordinated action and reports you've gotten from, from people, or, or both? It, both, and, and as well as active cases that we were already in initiatives that we were working on within Kentucky that we were already working on. It was just a matter of, of what, our, what our investigations that we are currently working in Kentucky, that basically we did this uh, big sting on a multi-state to make it you know, more of a, I guess, more of a, a wow factor uh, in which it should be. Can I add? Yeah. Uh, 
the way that this is done takes a lot of effort, doing it right, doing it victim-centered. Uh, so you have the cases that, that were worked, but then you've got the arrest itself, which can be dangerous, and you want to make it at a time when you can rescue as many victims as possible. That takes marshalling a lot of resources in a lot of areas together at the same time. There's an economy of scale in the regions that you're in and your ability to make that arrest, get the victim the services, make a second arrest, get that victim the, the services. Uh, so the, the coordination here is significant, but doing it in this way I do think helps to make sure uh, that it's done right. Um, and it also brings more attention to a, a really terrible crime that occurs out there. And could you clarify the number of rescues, the number of arrests just uh, Number. Yeah, right now, uh, as I understand, there have been in Kentucky uh, 46 arrests, but that, you know, that number could ultimately change. And uh, to the governor's mention about uh, there were 21 uh, victims that uh, have been able to uh, receive services. We've got the Office of Victims Advocacy that, uh, that has been helpful uh, in, in addition to what KSP has to offer, in addition to charities in Southeast Christian, too. All right. Thank you all very much. Okay. Thank you, General. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. What else we got? Governor, there's a lot of meetings being held this week next door. I'm sure in anticipation of a special session. As top of what you're thinking, or do you think sometime next week, or have you got enough for Well, we, we want to have it as soon as we can, uh, provided that it can be successful. Uh, certainly, we need to keep as many of the tools that we have in place right now that I don't think are very controversial. Things like workers' compensation for our uh, frontline um, health care, uh, EMS, uh, police, firefighters that have that additional exposure. Uh, we want to make sure they're taken care of. We need to continue to recognize doctors and nurses in other states so that they can provide services. We have some expanded telehealth. We, we expanded it under the law, but we have some extra expansion. Uh, seniors being able to get prescriptions uh, refilled and, and some other steps like licensing and having extra time so you don't have to come in in person for, for, for big exams. So, so we got to get through that piece. Uh, then we've got to get through the school piece, NTI, flexibility. We know the 10 days isn't going to cut it and, and so do everybody that we're working with. So trying to get a framework uh, there. And then the final piece is, um, you know, is masking. Uh, I certainly uh, am, am going to be real clear in where I am. Universal masking is the only way our schools can actually stay in person. I think it is a proven fact. Now, I know it's a proven fact. And we need the ability uh, for masking orders in the very least in the, the hardest hit areas, which right now is all of Kentucky, but might not be uh, as we move on. So those are, those are just generally the, the pieces uh, that are being discussed. Obviously, the, the masking will probably be the, the most difficult. Uh, of, of those, um, the discussions continue. Uh, I think we have technically until September 10th at midnight uh, when the state of emergency would expire, but we want to get it done uh, before then. So even if you can't get the masking piece, you still go ahead and get what you can get? Yeah, it, listen, we need as many tools as we can um, to, to fight this uh, virus. Uh, I believe that a number of these tools are absolutely essential, um, but we're not going to, to to, to not call a special session if we can't get one of six that we need, even if it's critical. Uh, I mean, there's, this isn't a, a win or loss. This isn't to, to make a point. It's, it's life or death. Is Tuesday an unrealistic start date? I don't think it's unrealistic if we can come to um, the full consensus, um, and, and we're not there yet. I think we're having very good conversations, um, but again, we want it to be as successful as it can be. Will, will I consider it successful in battling COVID if we don't have some ability on masking, I might not consider it um, fully successful, but if we can if we can get together a package that will pass and that'll work, then then we'll move ahead as quickly as we can. All right. Thank you all very much.